Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to those of you that were already in the Batman bit and welcome from those of you that are just joining now. Uh, the next session is about uh, the product roadmap, and that's what we will be discussing for the next hour. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Christian Garza, for those of you who know me, and I'm the, working in the product engineering team as product design manager. Uh, today, uh, we will touch in, on six points. Um, first, we have a, a, free look to the, uh, a brief look to the past nine months to remind you of the new features that we have uh, released. Uh, then we'll take a, a quick look to the features. Uh, there seems to be that there's something about my audio settings. Okay, okay, that seems to be just fine. Um, then we will take a, a quick look at the features and products that you can expect to be released soon by our team. And I also want to show you the process that we have been using to get these features out into the pipeline. The product engineering team is a new team and we have set up a significant number of workflows and procedures to get picture outs in an efficient way. So I would like to give you an act a concise look into one of those all processes. The results of that process are not only reflected in the products that we have, re we have released over the last nine months, but there are other KPIs involved. And I will show you how we have been uh, doing using that process based on those KPIs. One of the main objectives of this new process is the member's involvement. Uh, this is a user-driven process and I will talk about the role that many of you have already been playing in the delivery of new features. Uh, and finally, we will look, uh, we, will, we will allow you to keep driving us forward and we will look at our backlog of the last year and let you voice your thoughts about what is important from that backlog looking for the, on, on to the next year. Uh, so that final part is where this uh, uh, session becomes a working session. So we're going to make you work a little bit. So we hope you enjoy that part. Um, as you see, there's a very packed schedule. So I'm going to start moving on with the next part. Um, in this presentation is the product, it's called the product roadmap. And for that, I mean the public roadmap that you can all see in the data site homepage. Since 2019, this has been one of the main ways we publicly display the products and features that data site is working on. And not only that, uh, but the roadmap portal is one of the main places in which stakeholders can provide suggestions to the data site roadmap and to the product team. So to gouge a little bit uh, how familiar are all of you with the product roadmap and the public roadmap, I would like to just set a few questions. Uh, we're going to ask you to go against 20 meter and I'm pretty sure someone will be able to drop the link uh, in the chat box. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. Uh, and if you go to that link, uh, we will have a, a couple of questions just to, to start the day with this. Uh, and the first question is an agreement question uh, and that is, Am I aware of the features and products to be released according to the 2021 roadmap mm -hmm. for this year? Yeah. So if you can go to a link, how much you agree or disagree with that statement. And I'm going to give you a few minutes to actually enter the votes. Yeah, thank you. I think the number codes at the top of the screen, uh, Alicia. I think it's six five four four two zero seven nine, but uh, it should be in included in the link as uh, Jess just mentioned. Yeah, thank you, Elena. Okay, I think we have half of the 
people present in the in the call has already cast their vote. So I guess we are kind of in the middle. Uh, that's not that bad, but not as good as we were expected. So I'm going to move to the next question. We have a, a second question related to this. Um, and this one is, in the last year, in which ways you personally, I mean, or your team have provided suggestions or requests for, for functionality or features to data site? And I have put a series of options from which in the past we have received suggestions if, for features, uh, but I would like to know, I mean, what has been your experience? Okay, we have a kind of mixed responses, great. I mean, email is probably the main, being, is kind of the main medium that we have at the moment, together with the roadmap website, which is really good. That's the, uh, we are really interested in uh, leading to that, that way. But we also have some people that has not, uh, some members have not submitted any suggestions and uh, that's also something for the, that this call is for. So we would like to encourage you to do that, but we can, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, I think I'm going to stop it there. We have probably enough data at the moment. And the last question is precisely about the data site port homepage and the roadmap. It's like, have you ever provided, how often have you provided ideas via the data site uh, portal? Okay. And I think I think we have like a more uh, skewed response of this one that is like based on also the previous response to the previous answer to the question is more skewed towards that they have not been using the product roadmap. So this is uh, good and bad, but I mean, like hopefully we will uh, hopefully we will uh, manage to steer in that direction. Uh, I would let uh, another two seconds and then I will go to the next slide. Uh, but okay. Okay, let's move to the next part. We have already understood a little bit of how are you working, but let's talk a little bit now uh, what we have been, the changes that have been doing the last couple of uh, months. So. In the last nine months, there have been many changes in a few releases in data site. Uh, this year, you saw the release of schema 4.4, which is now implemented in many of the data site APIs. Together with that, we have we are exposing more leaks than ever before in data site commons with uh, features such as the go author list and the open access achievement batch. The, the users of data site commons have access to connection data and information of the PID graph like they didn't have before. And finally, during the last nine months, a significant emphasis has been on supporting internal business and processes and as well as member communications. Therefore, we center for a big chunk of time our attention improving our Salesforce integration. And you can see the results of these improvements as now you can manage Men, a lot of your contact information for your organization directly into Fabrica without needing to um, sign in off or subscribe for additional many lists and anything like that. I'm sure that you already know that, particularly the people that have been looking at, at uh, the roadmap. Uh, so let's talk about what is coming ahead and what you will see in the near future, hopefully. One of the first things that you can expect in the future is, of course, uh, more functionality in data site commons, specifically ORCID claiming. Uh, all common users will be able to claim works as defined it in commons directly into their ORCID record. Additionally, users will be able to find repositories in the commons interface. This is something that was available previously in other inter uh, public interfaces of data site, but now will be also in data site commons. 
Accessing MetaData in Schema 4.4 will also be made easier as we will improve the support for Schema 4.4 features. So there will be better ways to actually access the metadata in, with the new features of Schema 4.4. And finally, we are also aimed to help repository administrators in three specific areas. The first one is improving preface vaccination workflows. This is something that we have, we have tried to improve over the last year, and we have come up with a solution for that. There will be uh, some improvements in the preface vaccination. Another area we want to help administrations, our administrators of repositories is a patch to stunning for inactive repositories. So this is a repository that has been closed and we are want to help to provide a solution in that direction. And the final one, I know one that is everybody is really excited about that's bulk URL updates for DOIs uh, directly from Fabrica. So you don't have to use an API to migrate your domain for your DOIs if you wish to. The plan, uh, as you might see, is ambitious, but we feel confident that the process that we have can get us there in due time. So let's talk a little bit about uh, that process. Uh, we call our approach uh, the development journey. We work in a dual track workflow in which half of the team works on validating new features with users and, and the part of the sign. And the other half of, of the team works on building these features into software and services. This work, uh, of course, is iterative and aims to be user-driven. We have specific stages in which we involve the membership. Many of you have already, uh, already know that we use the portal roadmap, as correctly you have answered during the questions today, to collect insights and that's the part that you see at the bottom uh, left of this on this floor. And, and that's what uh, you're presented by these three people over there. Uh, but the part of the work that not many of you might be familiar with is the validation with a section, uh, with validation section with users, which is uh, something that I have marked with different uh, orange dots here in, the, in this uh, diagram. Here in this section, we invite specific stakeholders, people that actually will use the features that we are building, that will help us to validate that the features that we are designing address definitely and for sure member needs. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit further about in that section and about that part and how we have been doing so far there. So this year so far, 37 stakeholders can have contributed time to the validation of new products or features. Some of them might be in this same call. This is not limited to members. I must say it also includes stakeholders from other registration agencies and organizations such, such as EGU or RE3 data and others. I must say that 37 uh, stakeholders is not a meaningless figure here. Uh, and this, this is as many stakeholders as all the steering groups combined. So there's been an excellent effort from the community of stakeholders to help us to validate new features. So you can be sure that everything that we have be, we will be releasing over the next couple of months and in the future, it has, it, it has been checked to address user needs. Um, I must mention that many of these new features have uh, come out from community suggestions in insights that we have captured. And as you saw in that workflow, there is a section in that workflow in which we also collect insights and suggestions from members. Uh, collecting and taking action over these insights and suggestions is what makes us a user-driven organization. And in the last nine months alone, uh, the community has provided around 159 insights of suggestions to feature changes. That is more uh, in uh, suggestions that we have collected in the previous two years combined. So as you can see, uh, this way that we have been using with the product roadmap uh, on the website, the product suggestion has been significantly successful. We have been doing uh, pretty well in the last nine months to actually to understand what you really need to be, get addressed. Uh, for uh, and just once again, I, I saw that not everybody is looking at the looks at the roadmap. But uh, to for those who are familiar with the way we collect suggestions and sites, 
you can visit the roadmap page on our main website and, and there you can submit uh, a new suggestion or support existing features with the click of a button. There are also survey links that will tell you to a specific uh, surveys that can help you to provide more detail about suggestions and support and even to support other, other suggestions. Here I put an example of a feature that I previously mentioned this batch or bulk DUI update. And, and you can see the elaborate length, lengths to which some people in our community have provided suggestions about the new features. You probably might be asking like, who are these people who are taking time to send suggestions or support existing features? Um, and well, I can tell you that they come from all types of organizations and geographical locations. In the last nine months, we have captured insights from 38 organizations in total. I also want to mention that also these 38 organizations have provided 158 suggestions this year. So that as I start has been also we working for what's and find in collecting new insights through various channels. The team uh, this year alone has collected an additional 63 insights from the community. Now, most of the organizations that send suggestions are present in the chart that you can see on the right. Uh, so if your, the, your name, the name of your organization or organization that works under your membership is on this list, we say thank you. Today, you are drive, in the driving seat of the data side roadmap. Uh, the suggestions you send us are invaluable and they help us to keep, us, keep the pulse in the community. Today at the member meeting, we are covering three regions around the globe. And when we can actually see how membership has been participating from these three different regions have been participating on driving the data roadmap. Uh, this session covers today's session. Well, I mean, this one in particular, the one where we are covers Europe, the Middle East, the Africa uh, and Africa region, as well as the Asia Pacific region. Two very contrasted regions in terms of not only geogra geography, but uh, how they contribute to the roadmap. Um, the uh, Europe, Middle East, and African region is definitely at the driving seat of the roadmap as they provide 56% of the science provided by all members during the last uh, nine months. On the other hand, a more modest contribution has come from the APAC region. And also, humble, this contribution is also significant as the membership from the ASEAN Pacific region is only 2% of the total membership. So. I don't want to get anybody discouraged. We, we also need more information, but uh, we would like to encourage you to keep participating and both your support and provide new ideas to the roadmap. This helps the product engineering team to validate new features, but also helps the whole data side to be aware of your needs. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, the rest of the session will be used to do exactly that, uh, to uh, listen to what would you like us to do in 2022? Uh, and we have prepared a small workshop exercise to get an idea of what's important for you in 2021. And this is when this call becomes a, a working call rather than just an FYI. Mm. As I mentioned, we have collected 156 suggestions uh, from you this year. Not all of them have made it to the 2021 roadmap. Some of them, uh, we have just put them in a backlog because we have many things planned for 2021. And as we approach the end of the year, we want to know what's relevant from that backlog to be carried over to 2022. And we would like to get your perspective on that. And that's what this exercise is about. That is about. And to do that, we would like to make you uh, to take uh, to make you bold for this in the roadmap to that you think you sh uh, we should carry over to the 2022 roadmap. So these are the items that uh, I have not made it to the to this year's roadmap, but they can make it to the next one if you, if you think they are really important. We have put all those items uh, into virtual sticky notes, and we have made a virtual board, whiteboard for on this exercise. Um, we want to do you to three simple things. Visit the virtual board, read all the items in that board in silence on your time. That probably will take us around 10 minutes and we will give you a few minutes to do that. And then vote for the things that you, that you think we should be carried over to the 20, 2022 backlog. As simple as that, just go to the board, read and vote, those three steps. 
Um, I think someone will drop the link is on the screen, but I think uh, Sarala is dropping the link on the chat box as well. Uh, and I'm going to leave a few minutes for everybody to uh, go there to the to the board, uh, and then I will give you further instructions. Um, and I think I can see how many of you are already there. Uh, I think we have seven people, but I will leave it uh, uh, a little bit more time. Uh, thank you, everybody, for voting. Uh, I'm going to mention just the top most voted items. I think we have metadata quality tool. Uh, this is about improving the uh, metadata. Uh, the second most voted thing is linked to other profiles like GitHub to personal, personal accounts. We also have a uh, bulk uh, upload in Fabrica. That's another one highly voted. And I think there are a few with the same number of votes here. Merge Sats portal into Fabrica or Commons. Um, also notifications about the UI resolution failures is another one uh, that has many votes. Um, and a few other ones. Uh, we will be sharing the results of all, that, of all this later. I think uh, uh, we fair to say that everybody can see my screen where the votes happen, uh, the top voted things appear on the left hand side maybe Sarala you can help me to confirm that yes we can see thank you thanks okay uh, so this is really useful information it's going to help the product engineering team to prioritize for the year ahead uh, and uh, so I thank you for that uh, so let's continue with this this session um, once again, I mean, we are practically closing at the end of this session. Uh, so, but once again, I'm going to ask you to go to Mentimeter for the last part of this. There are three final questions for you. And I'm going to, uh, once again, bother Sarala. Sorry, Sarala, could you just drop the link in the box? Um, we have three final questions just to, to send you home before that. Uh, the link is the screen, but it's also down there um, in the chat box. Um, I think you saw that you have, uh, over the last couple of sessions, the last two, we have been talking about the strategy, the roadmap, even the metadata schema in the previous session, and the plans we have, the backlog that we have. So you might already have opinions, not only on the things that we should be doing, but also on what we should not be doing. So therefore, the first question is, what are we doing product-wise that you think we shouldn't be doing. We would like to get your opinion on that. So pop your answer and Mentimeter and help us to figure out what you think, what we shouldn't be doing product-wise. Um, maybe it's a little bit hard, a hard question, but I'd let you there think a bit, a, a bit about that one. I think nobody has, has cast their vote yet. Oh, well, we have one. Okay. I, I think uh, I, we... first I send the link to just the panelists. Oops. Oh, okay. So, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, this is uh, okay. <laughs> one more All right. Okay. That's the link for everybody. Our apologies for that. So the, then we have a little bit more time to, to see. I think so far we only have two comments on this, so I guess there are not many things we shouldn't be doing. 
Uh, okay. I don't know if I uh, should I leave another minute. Uh, I think we only have two I people that have fine. voted. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So I think we still should be doing everything. Um, okay. The second question is is a uh, is a bit different. Uh, Okay, we have a third vote. Uh, the thing, uh, and is we would like to know about what you like the most about those. We would like to know what you want, uh, what you like the most about data site. And the second question, therefore, is what is the best selling feature of, of data site? And it doesn't have to be like a product or a feature into our services. It could be a quality that we have. But if you could say what's the best selling feature of data site and pop it out, uh, pop it in the, the responses there, that would be good to know. If someone finds the, the cat registration too, too hard, uh, feel free to uh, drop them in the chat box. That would be, that would also be good. Okay, I think we have like uh, many quality, many qualities here that we should be uh, that you found uh, like a good selling feature of data site. That's very useful. Thank you very much for that. But I think that the, the one highlight here is that we are collaborative. Uh, so excellent. Uh, I'm going to move then to the to the last question, uh, and it's not something. And the last question is actually not something for you to answer here, um, but it's something I want, uh, something that you can answer either on the Roma website or, or on the Google form that uh, was shared in the chat box before. And that is, what we should be working on that we are not currently or planning to work on? And as I said, you don't have to answer that here. Um, but you can go either to a roadmap, there's a Google form as well that uh, Sarla has been uh, sharing there. And you can drop it at any time over the last, uh, over than the next days, months, whenever you feel like you've, there is, you know about something that they decide you would like us to work on, but we are not, or not currently planning to. You can uh, drop us a message there uh, and we'll be really happy to, oh, to look at, at that. Um, as I said, there is a roadmap website where you can drop these suggestions. There is also a Google forum and there are links between both of them. So everything gets automatically collected. Nothing to worry about, uh, about like we are missing anything. And I think with last that last question, uh, uh, we reached the end of this session. So I thank you all for your time and your participation. This has been incredibly useful. I hope you have enjoyed it and had a good time. And I wish you a, uh, an excellent rest of the member meeting. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Are there any questions? Okay.
I guess we can close the session then. Thank you.